welcome to Creative Happy Hour. Cheers to you. <laughs> I'm Karina. And I'm Micah. Woohoo! Get ready to get drunk with us on the creative possibilities. So today, what are we drinking, Micah? <laughs> like, oh, we, I, know, I haven't even drank anything yet. <laughs> uh, we are drinking Cliff Lady. It is a delightful Chardonnay. Chardonnay. From the Anderson Valley. Mm. It's and delicious. It is delicious. And actually, uh, my husband and I went to the winery this weekend, and you were working your butt off, so you didn't I was come. working. You were working. I <laughs> heard about the visit. You heard about the visit, which was a lovely thing. And we thought that this was a beautiful choice for a beverage that has a great link to creativity. Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. And we will see why that is just a little bit later. Um, we also wanted to tell you guys that we are breaking this podcast down now, starting now. We're going to try to be much more professional. We're going to try. We're going to try. And we're going to break it down into two parts, the drinking part and the thinking part. Woo -woo. <laughs> so um, we're starting with the drinking part, obviously, obviously, because I mean, we get smarter and prettier when I mean, we drink. This is happy hour. This is happy hour. So we are going to start right now with a few little tasting notes. Should we taste it? Oh, yes. Woo -hoo, I'm waiting. Try. OK, let's go. Mm. Mm. Really nice, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's so nice. So it's not our normal Chardonnay. It's not your typical Chardonnay from mm -hmm, Napa mm -hmm. Valley, which is what I like about it. I like that a lot too. And since we read all about it because we did our research, we know that it doesn't have the malolactic fermentation that so many Chardonnays do have. And it doesn't have that heavy wood. It's in a neutral barrel, maybe some steel, yeah. but I won't quote myself on that at all. But, <laughs> but it's, it's good. What do you taste? I taste <laughs> Lisbon lemons, of course. <laughs> Why, yes. Don't you love reading the tasting notes before we even have it? I think I detect a bit of quince. Oh, oh so fresh. I don't even think I've ever so, tasted quince verbena, before. Yes. Verbena, perchance. I smell, yeah, yes. verbena, definitely. No, seriously, this is, the great thing is about this, that it's not, the flavors are not obscured by that ridiculous butterness. Oaky, that oaky to, just bombardment. Exactly. That you find in these Napa Chardonnay. Yes, typically. I, I, I mean, no offense, I love them. We do. They're and, necessary. And if, and if any sometimes. of you want to sponsor us, like, we'll, we'll totally we'll say one of the things about your Chardonnay. Awesome we will. We will <laughs> for sure. But one of the reasons that we're, we're not being sponsored by Cliff Lady, though we really wish we were, um, <laughs> but in the tasting room, they were really wonderful. And we had such a great experience that we wanted to, you know, cover this particular label for many different reasons. So what other things, let's, should we talk about the history of the, well, what's the name? What's wine got to yeah. do with what's it? What's wine got to do with it? I know, I almost with... posted out in like a Tina Turner yeah. rendition. And unfortunately, but... I'm the one who took it there. That's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this wine, this actual label is not from the typical Cliff Lady label. It's mm. from their secondary or maybe their parallel label mm -hmm. uh, called F-E-L, Fell. Fell. Named after Cliff Lady's mother. Mom. Yep. Florence. Florence. Elsie. Elsie. Lady. Lady. Who, who was an amateur winemaker. See, my kids made me into an amateur wine drinker, so that's pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, kids that will do she... that to you. They <laughs> yeah. will definitely do yes. that. And she was also a gardener, so the label, which we would have right now if we hadn't... Well, if your husband didn't... <laughs> exactly. And then chuck it in the recycling. He's such a recycler. Like, oh my gosh, I mean... <laughs> It was recycling night today, and he literally was like, oh, you'll be so glad. I cleaned it's everything strength, up. We're and like, his weakness. Uh, in this. Yeah. We're like, did you really? Really? Okay, yeah. yeah. We. So this is why we like to work alone. Right. <laughs> this is why creativity is sometimes a solitary thing. Yeah, someone throws out your, yes. you know, your, your artwork. Wine, your wine bottle. <laughs> Usually we like to get rid of the evidence, but I think this time we're like, dude, what if we have to reshoot? But we're not going to do that because no, we're consummate we, we're, professionals. Yeah, we're yes. going pro here. We're going completely pro. So let's talk mm -hmm. about the history. So we've got FEL. So he's, you know, this is all about his mom who was this influence in his life. Mm -hmm. So the, and he comes from a family of builders. That I thought was really major. So Beautiful. they're Canadian, which is, it makes them better a little bit. Yeah, um, there's definitely yeah. some prestige with being Canadian. There is, especially, yeah. They're nicer days, than they're Americans. Ni they're more polite than They're Americans. way more polite. And I think they're just industrious and cool. So he's Canadian, builder, which I think is great because he has built this incredible vineyard that is, it's been made so, just so carefully every mm -hmm. step of the way, right? 
It's uh, <laughs> he's smiling at the camera. You love the camera. I'm working the camera. Working the camera. <laughs> yeah. So let's discuss. So this the strategic way of building this winery. So Cliff Lady acquires the first of the vineyard plots mm -hmm. a while back. We don't do dates. We'll put them up here. <laughs> Here's the date that he created. Yeah. Look, e, e, e. yeah, and I mean, uh, we all took history. We don't dates mm -hmm. aren't really dates are not a creative thing for us. No. We're not judging if you love dates and if, but that's just us. So he acquires this vineyard because of the absolute location and the characteristics, right, mm. of you know that vineyard, and then he hires the best, you know, wine growing dude. Viticulturist, is that what we call them? V yeah. Vi Vina v v v yeah, the vita vita viticulturist. We'll, viticulturist. We'll just say viticulturist. Yeah, sure. I think that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Wine Confirmation. Dude. I think the wine dude. The wine dude. Wine, wine dude maker is dude. what, yes. So he hires the best wine dude. Mm -hmm. Name goes here because we're lame. Um, and he starts to grow these grapes and uh, do it very carefully, you know, highest quality. You were reading well, about and, the and they green... allow the the grapes to oh, yeah. they they do mm -hmm. minimal interventions minimal so intervention to that's allow what I love. the grapes to um, <laughs> express themselves express themselves in relationship to their environment. That's so, what I told my parents I needed. I said I needed minimal <laughs> intervention so I could express myself in the best possible well, the good way. That did really weird. <laughs> it didn't work out, but you know. So yeah, yeah, and I think that in addition to that whole minimal intervention, mm -hmm. I think that that earned them their green certification yeah so they and, have the sustainability yes, and that's which is often fabulous. important to exactly and, and, and then all these different vineyards that you really feel the qualities of that terroir see we know some fancy mm. words we don't know dates but we don't wow. know yeah say terroir and very uh fancy. right very fancy <laughs> so this anderson valley what, what are we thinking the characteristics that we can taste in this anderson valley chardonnay would be anderson valley is over more coastal. Well, right? it's more coastal, so that it's gonna mm -hmm. have a cooler climate. Uh -huh. um, it's gonna we're gonna have notes of fog. Notes of fog. <laughs> I think I can taste. Let me let me see. I, I, I taste a little fog in this. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Notes of fog. Notes of fog. I mean, if you have sure. not put that on your tasting, um, you're just not tasting right. You're just not subtle. I think enough. that should go into tasting right? notes. notes of I mean, nebulous. If anyone wants to hire me, it's, for it's tasting nebulous. For their, you know, designing their tasting, their tasting notes. notes. Yes. I think a taste of fog is. I think a taste of fog really is expressive. I think mm. that that should be something that's included in the tasting. Um. So yeah. So the Anderson Valley has that. That but element, then, which is, element. is also where a lot of the Pinot grapes Absolute, are grown. Exactly, and they do have some lovely Pinots between FEL and Cliff Lady. They have both of those. So the other thing that I find is we were talking about location and where things are located. And I felt that going to the winery and visiting the vineyards was mm -hmm. really important because it, all of the different plots have names from rock albums. Yeah, so apparently mm -hmm. Cliff Lady is very, very um, into music and yes. and, ce and celebrates that mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the naming of the vineyards. Exactly. And so it gives Which a I whole, love. yeah, I love it. It gives a whole dimension mm -hmm. to everything. You can tell that this guy is a multi-passionate Inspired, entrepreneur. inspired. Completely inspired. And brings it and infuses it in everything. Yes. And there was a playlist that they were playing this great music. And my husband and I were like, wow, that's incredible. And they're like, yeah, that's our special playlist. And I was like, you guys are so cool. Like, I wanted a mixtape. I was like, come on, guys. Don't you love me? Make me a mixtape. They should do a wine called Mixtape. Ooh, we should suggest that. Maybe I, that's I mean, when the big box yeah. will come in. You mixtape. know, like creative Ooh. collaborations with wineries. Another one called Eight track I mean, it just, we'll the ideas be keep coming. You we'll can be just here call all me. year. Yes. Yeah. So she has my cell phone number if yes. you need to hire someone. Yes. So, so yeah, it's really great when you visit the winery and they have all these guitars like that they've collected. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a real rocker vibe. And I love that. then you can I tell. I love rockers. We're going to talk oh, about another rocker. Oh, we are later yes, on. Yes, that, for sure. Yes. yes, for sure. So that's something that's teasing you to actually mm -hmm. tune into our glass. No, even later to our thinking portion. Yes, when we're not drinking, might, we're going to be thinking. Yeah, you might want to actually tune in for that because we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about, should we name who it is? Should we tease it out? Well, I have a serious crush right now. <laughs> After listening to the Joe Rogan podcast, I have a serious crush on David Lee Roth. Ooh, enough said. 
perfect. So yeah. So there you go. That's my David pod. Cr my pod crush. Your <gasps> pod crush. Pod crush. Pod crush. <laughs> yeah, we are available for pod crushes if anybody yes. feels. <laughs> But so yeah, <laughs> tune in for that because that's gonna be incredible. But so the the winery, you feel that sense that they're really into music, mm -hmm. they're into art, and there's all this sculpture around, and the architecture is incredible. They've purposely mm -hmm. hired the best architects possible to translate their vision, and it's not pretentious at all. And then they have that in. Oh yes, the yeah. poetry in poetry. I mean, is that not beautiful? Mm -hmm. I think just. The idea of it and I was thinking that you know maybe it's so casual that it doesn't really translate for people who are looking for some hoity-toity thing but not true because my very pretentious but very charming art dealer friend mm. visited there with his wife and they had such a good time they said it was magical Ooh, they said magical. you could really magical that's a magical very, that's a very very good description I thought it was really good basically is there anything else that we can say about cliff lady and their wonderful wines. I'm thinking that it's just a great example of a company that's been run by people with passion and integrity. And I just love that. It's like, they're obviously creative. They've created something very subtle and lovely. Yeah, they're yeah. living an artful, they are. An artful life. And it's, it's the kind of life that makes it worth living. And it includes <laughs> drinking, so that's great. Yeah. And we never promise that there'd be absolutely no thinking in the drinking part, so there you go. <laughs> You're just gonna have to deal with that. You're have to you deal know, with sometimes that. when you go to happy hour and somebody people get into it, they start crying. Somebody starts and crying. You're like, Whoa, and yeah, somebody's and you're gonna like, get hurt here. You're like, Stop. <laughs> you're like, when do we start talking about shoes? Like this is. <laughs> I mean, this is getting way too deep right. at happy hour. <laughs> so as part of happy hour, we just mentioned the kind of laughing and crying part. So we also have in our drinking section. Glass half empty. Glass half full. Woohoo. And sometimes I tend to be glass half empty because I'm that negative. You're a little downtrodden kind of, sometimes. I'm a little bit of a negative yeah. Debbie Downer kind yeah. of person. But this week I've decided to be pretty positive. I, I'd read an article that I thought was going to be negative and it turned out kind of positive. So I was really happy. Hmm. Uh, but first, what happened to you creatively this week? Anything fun and cool that we well, should Well, I know finished of? some fingerless gloves, which oh, I baby. should be wearing. I don't know why I'm it's not wearing this right now. It's freaking freezing in Marin County right now. I don't know why right I'm now. not wearing this. And I added a little... Do they have a little edge? A little yeah, zing? Yeah, they have a little Ooh. frequency Ooh. going on. A little... Get your little uh, frequency on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have a little zippity zoo. I like that. And so those were fun. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then I wore one the, of my fiber frequencies ooh, yes. in, in the, you know, the shop where I was working. I love it. And an artist, a painter came ooh. in and she was like... I. I, you know, she I'm had vibrating on yeah, that frequency. Yeah, 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 she was. And she, she even asked me if that scarf was mm -hmm. a representation of my creative personality. Oh, which and I you thought like, was kind of interesting. Yes, yes she said, it is. She said Unless it's all you... over the place. Yeah. But yeah. then she's like, then somehow it all goes together. And Touché. I was, <laughs> I was like, like, that could be any of us. Yeah. But yeah. But you told her also that if it was, if she thought it was her frequency, that that could be arranged. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I was like, no, actually, this is your frequency. Yeah. You're, you're like, the I'm... one that has the issues with it, not exactly. me. I'm wearing it and I'm not having like, any problems. You're reacting to it. You're the you're, one... You know, reacting to exactly. it. So this is your fiber frequency <laughs> yes. and you just haven't owned it yet. See, you're you're such a good example of somebody who does the creative side and the sales side. Smooth. The, the, the nut <laughs> job <Smooth>. side. <laughs> Smooth. I know. It's awesome. Yeah. I it's mean, awesome. <laughs> it's it's easy. Yeah. It's easy. So, so this week, I will talk about myself yes, just a please. little bit. Yes, I want to know One, what happened right? with you creatively because I've, I've, I've only seen you at the in front of I a know. screen. In front of, I'm constantly in front of a damn screen. Like, that's the story of my life. In fact, you know, we're going to be talking in the thinking part about multi-passionate, creative entrepreneurs, and that's what I'm going to call myself instead of calling you myself are. a mess um, because I'm currently working on a book about writer's block to put on my writer's platform mm. and even though I you know kind of would almost rather be writing my fiction books you know I feel like I'm being ripped away from them but I think it's really important to yeah, people be need, educating people yeah people yes. need mm -hmm. someone to help them through absolutely that so I think that experience. that's my that's my goal right now so I'm writing something that's going to revolutionize how people think about writer's block mm -hmm. and creative block and like any kind of block and you gave me this oh, fabulous this book is book which I have started to read and I've been trying not to read 
too much because I'm like, shoot, is this literally everything? No, you I should just put that book in your smoothie just, and drink it in the morning. It on my it, no, you really should. I mean, it's like you know how people put like spirulina and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, just grind you it. You should up. just put that book well, in it, your smoothie. I've been using it kind of like religious people use the Bible. Like I'm just like, <laughs> oh, this speaks to me. Oh, this section. Oh, self doubt can be an ally. This is because yeah. it serves as an indicator of aspiration. Well, that is Ooh. very true. See, that's the problem. <laughs> this is I. I think it's that I seductive, isn't it? I know. This I'm is just like, like Ooh. pornography. This that's book. why you gave it to me. I know. That's you. That's but this is excellent. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the war of art, and I think it's awesome. I love the title, mm. and I actually love the Esquire. Um, it says a vital gem, a kick in the ass, and considering it really is. Yeah, considering that my book is called uh, Writer's Block is a pain in the ass. Oh, I thought yeah. So oh, you're gonna have to meet Stephen Pressfield. I know. Going to have to. I mean, I so, want to meet him. So thank you so much for that. Um, the other thing that I thought was going to be a Debbie Downer, but mm. I turned into a glass half full, oh. was an article I read about this awesome woman, uh, Kimberly Drew. Oh, I read that article no, too. No, in the Huffington Post? I did. Huffington I Post, love the people. Huffington Post. I love the HuffPo when you want to get like a digest <laughs> of your stuff. Yeah. And, yes. So I was reading it, of course, being little bit neggy. I was like, oh, only 4% of, you know, black female artists, you know, ever get represented in an institution. I'm like, that's really bad. But then I read about what she was doing and I was so uplifted. Um, yeah, yeah. She turned that frown upside she, down. She really did. She really did. She's, that, she's an amazing woman. I mean, truly. She started off just like with this amazing education. I can't remember. Did she go to Smith College, Harvard? Where'd she, she went all over the place. She's she amazing. did. And then she worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. She did. And she was doing social media, I believe for them mm -hmm. and I think she worked in a Harlem museum as well but she mm -hmm. said it was like this amazing education for her that she wishes could have been um, carried through to the other uh, learning institutions that she attended after that and I was like that's so interesting and then she started a blog on Tumblr, mm -hmm. um, Tumblr. which was contemporary black artists is that what it is contemporary black art back oh. in 2011 so that was amazing because I mean that was kind of the forefront of people actually using social media for something other than like selfies actually, I don't even know if the selfie was really a big thing before then but um but yeah, it's amazing that she was trying to use social media to as, transform this yeah, force for good this statistic completely which is a completely. very glass half empty statistic absolutely but she had so a few things in the article that stood out for me um she was talking about how communities are so important and mm -hmm. that's something that you and I are always trying to build you with your you know knitting group yep. me with my writing group and every type of community that we've been mm -hmm. joining and you know I join a lot of institutions and the thing she said about institutions you know it was so bleak but then she's like listen you know each and every person has the possibility of getting involved in an institution no matter how big and that's very true mm -hmm. you know like we I've don't been, think that though I mean I many I just, people don't think that way yeah you yeah. think like oh you have to mm -hmm. be in a certain level of a certain field right. or mm -hmm. you know and you don't realize that it's not true like that little, you can yeah. be on a board or oh, you completely can believe me yeah just be like me get it tattooed in transparent ink on your forehead will volunteer for any board and they'll get they'll call you um or you can be more forceful and go but basically once you are a member of a board or even any kind of volunteer mm -hmm. for a, a, an institution you have so much more pull you have so well you much, actually have a say you have in, a say in what that's, happens mm -hmm. in that institution exactly so i thought that was a really I, positive it really is message it really is and then i mean for everything she's doing um she's doing, doing great things she's yeah. she's um really focusing in on her audience very much so very much so and and she's, that's something that we talk about a lot mm -hmm, in you know mm -hmm. creative happy hours you you don't you know you don't necessarily have to appeal to everyone exactly and also she says you have to kind of redefine success in yes. the art world like you don't have to be this artist who's at art basel even though a group that she's affiliated mm -hmm. with uh did send a group of like 11 or 12 black women to art basel this year which i thought was super cool because that's very high visibility yes that was amazing but yeah you can you can be volunteering in the art world and still kind of get your art yayas out and be creatively active without being, you know, and still be extremely successful, mm -hmm. you know, so you can't be like, oh, just because I'm not this fine arts painter, I'm not successful in the art world, you know, that's a silly thing. Did you, was there anything yeah, else? Yeah, and, and also, you know, she talks a, a lot about, her, you know, her, her history, the history, um, 
black history, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. women, Very much, black yes. women in the art history yes. world and how they're underrepresented. Completely. And she really focuses on learning your history. We, you know, we yes. always do some kind of history, history yes. of our drink. You exactly. know, it is, it's something that we explore. And so she really grounds her. She does. She thinks it's so important to kind of look back her to relationship where, yeah, to where you came her from. history. Absolutely. Um, yeah. She talks about multiplicity of mediums, Ooh, yes. which I love. Quantum physicist over yes, here. I love yes. the multiplicity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, what else? Oh, and she uses all these modern, you know, even though she she's looking into these multiplicity mm -hmm. of mediums, yeah. she's also bringing in all of these modern tools. You completely, know, social media. Completely. She's got all of that stuff completely yeah. on lockdown, which I find so impressive. And the cool thing is, too, she's not really doing it for the fame, even though she's getting so much attention, because then I kind of went down that rabbit well, hole. She's I'm an sure activist. I mean, she's, yeah, a, she's, she's an activist. She's an activist, but she also isn't in it for any of the wrong reasons at all. She's not in it for ego or anything. She's like, you know what? I fully understand that you know some of the work I do is not actually going to have this huge measurable you know well that she may not even see it happen she, she in her lifetime exactly is what but she that says. knowing that she was involved she was contributing she you know that's good enough and i love that i mean i would love to have that success someday but i get it like i get that thing of trying to be part of something yeah. bigger than you so what else did you read any articles or podcasts or anything like that 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 totally knocked your socks off is the dog barking? She yeah, I was like, like oh no. Yeah, my crazy dog. dog who I'm surprised. Usually she tries yeah. to like sit between us. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told, I think I told you I was listening to the Joe Rogan oh, podcast. Oh, you love that podcast. And so he, I like he how he does a, does a I like it. Yeah, he does a deep dive. Mm -hmm. He does a long form and the, the mm -hmm. person gets really warmed up. And then you get, you know, you he really like peels away these layers of his guests. He, he gets and, them to admit to some things. I and think, I like, love it. You know, he gets them to smoke pot on the podcast. Yes. I mean, I think he had Elon See, Musk wait, was smoking wait, a joint on well, the podcast. I think Elon Musk would be smoking a joint anyway. Well, I is just, my guess. I, for I mean, some reason, SpaceX, I just, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we just drink. I mean, we know it's legal in California. We could be smoking up, but it doesn't mix with the alcohol. No, we're, no. you know, we're one, one trick pony. We, for that. One we're multi-passionate creatives. Yes. But one trick pony. In you know, our, it, yes, yeah, our exactly. extracurricular dreaming. Exactly. No, but I, so he was interviewing David Lee Roth, and I guess my glass half full mm. would be... I'm more, glad we have two glasses half full. Yeah, well, awesome. I always like my glass half full. And you, not do. Empty. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm always that girl. <laughs> yes, you are. So, you know, he, he asked him, you know, how long did it take you to write that song, Running With The Devil? And, Ooh, you know, the, love the, that song. Yeah. Danny Allen, I mean, that's mm -hmm. late 70s, early 80s. Yes. You know, if you're a millennial, you... You may have found a Van Halen t-shirt at Maybe. I, I Urban mean, Outfitters. What I'm loving know. is just that Van Halen, like, when, when they started out, like, David Lee Roth was such, when he did it just a gigolo, Ugh. I totally thought of him that that's what he was. I was just like, this guy. He embodies is, his character. Right? I was like, what a little 80s, I, I think it was 1984, that song. Yeah. Total 1980s yeah. douchebag. Mm -hmm. You know, like, rocker douchebag. Mm -hmm. Different type of douchebag than those we see today. But yeah. I thought, this dude is not going to last. And he's proven us wrong. Oh, he is right? lasting and lasting yeah. and lasting. Yeah. I mean, so what did what, what so did basically they ask him, and and he says, oh well, you know, he he doesn't give an immediate answer. He goes, oh well, you know, maybe <laughs> like I read five hundred <laughs> books, maybe I saw a thousand movies, maybe I heard this many albums, and he, you know the way that he said. When it happened, it took about 18 minutes to write the song. However, oh, wow. he, what, what he was saying but is, he was digesting. is everything, he was, everything that everything. we did before that, we went to music mm. school, we went, you know, uh -huh. we studied music, we read this many books, we saw this many movies. He, he talked about the compilation experience of you, you get to a place you know, where you can write a song in 18 minutes because mm -hmm. of where you've been before and all of I your previous that. knowledge. And it was so... Isn't that reassuring? I was like, For somebody yes, like, yes. like, oh my God, yeah. I was like, I, I, you know, it was very, very comforting to me because sometimes you... Well, yeah, I feel like I get distracted by all these things I'm super interested by and it's just taking away from everything no, that I'm to do. No, but it's adding to. And his argument, I, I and like he's a that perfect, multi-passionate entrepreneur, entrepreneur. Yes. that is, he, you know... That is what he said. He was like, all these things that you do, they lead up to I what you're going to do I love and they that. add to it. Well, that is awesome. Well, I think that what we can do is we can stop our drinking part here because we can take, I mean, you have so much more to say about David Lee Roth, I think. Oh my gosh. Of course. She has a crush. Pod crush. Pod crush. <laughs> so I think that what we'll do is that we're going to, 
start our next part where we're going to talk about multi-passionate creatives and we can add some examples from david lee ross incredible journey mm, okay love it. be right back cheers guys cheers hey guys hey guys cheers cheers welcome to creative happy hour part two the thinking parts Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so today we are thinking about we just talked about a winemaker who was a creative multi-passionate entrepreneur and that got us thinking about you know how creatives can seem a little bit scattered sometimes and how being multi-passionate is actually a plus it's a benefit it's a benefit for sure but we're going to talk about how as a creative you can be multi-passionate and you can have those interests but like kind of that balance and how mm. to, you know, make those work together. So can you think of a, an example? Let's get deep down and personal. Okay. Uh, we're going to be crying on the bar stool right now. Ah. Can you think of a personal example of like, you know, your experience trying to juggle various creative and professional projects? Oh, I mean, You're my like, life okay. right now. Yeah. I'm like, exactly. uh, you, you want to talk personal? My life yeah. right now is completely, you know, I'm I'm always pursuing some kind of, knitting project mm -hmm. and but you used to be uh, uh you do you do these beautiful pastels yes mm -hmm. so and i still do from time to time i will you know when i'm alone and i'm feeling a little bit that way out of sorts <laughs> that way <laughs> i i will you know put the music on get a bottle of wine and i will do pastels for hours is the bottle and of wine necessary Maybe. No, it's you not. Know. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. But it's more. It's a very relaxing mm -hmm. way to kind of get in touch with where I am Completely. at the time. And yes. so, yeah. So I was really. I was like, oh, I'm gonna do pastels, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do. The rest and of my And then, life. yeah. And then I started to get really into fiber, and mm -hmm. you know, dyeing, and and I remember and you were even doing these amazing and, rugs. Like I got as when I was working as a designer. Yes. Um, which I still, you know, off and on. Uh, but I got one of those rugs yeah. for one of my clients who was blown away. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I was crocheting these enormous mm -hmm. rugs out of recycled fabric. So, Incredible. you know, vintage sheets mm -hmm. or uh, reclaimed sari material. Still, still fibers with a story, though. Yeah. And that's something where we're going to get into that a little bit later. Because, see, you weren't confused after all. You thought you were. But that's your core value. Yeah, my core value is, yeah. and and you know, and and after that, you know, I kept making these giant circles, giant mm -hmm. circles, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is an obsession. Mm -hmm. And well, even some of your pastels had that circle motif. Yes, as well. And, you were looking, you were circling something. the circle, yeah. and it's interesting because um, your, your core. there's um, Carl Jung mm -hmm. went off on his own. I don't know if you've ever seen the Red Book. It's called the Red Book. And he does mm -hmm. a series of mandalas. Ooh, and wow. he talks about how psychologically, when you are doing these repetitive mandalas, which oh. I would argue which that Which have become my, very trendy lately. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I'm the pop culture dumb one. She's the smart one. So <laughs> Jung, I never, I, you know, no. Oh you my see gosh. mandala and but I think coloring. <laughs> no, but it's not. No, his. if you see his mandalas, mm -hmm. they are so extremely detailed and they I mean they are fine art wow they truly are fine oh, art. oh that's very cool and his, you know I would love to own a copy of the red book so however cool. it's is a it, little bit out of my budget we, right now can we steal one from the library or yeah something, so or? It, it's <laughs> if you haven't seen it you should seek it out and look at it because it is is really beautiful that's he so went cool. put it up here yeah he went <laughs> off mm -hmm. on his own to you know to work that out some the... personal issues. Oh, okay. Did and he, then he, he would travel to do this? Did he? He went off in a cabin and lived by himself. Oh, cool. And, and wow. he did these mandalas. And he, uh, you know, if you know anything about Carl Jung, he was always talking about, you know, working out these personal psychological issues. He and that's what issues. he did. He had some issues. And so it sure. was kind of, it. you know, I was like, why do I keep so doing this? So that was this? your version of that. It was yeah. my version. Yeah. And now, you know, I've You've always, through. I've always wanted to do mm -hmm. a radio show or mm -hmm. a podcast. It's yeah. And we talked about that. And For then, years we yeah. talked about it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, now I'm working two jobs. I'm raising a daughter. I'm For sure. doing but, my fiber art mm -hmm. and... And here, I'm, and, and here I'm doing this. Yeah, and, and so, it, but it's all going towards that thing of that creative expression. I think that that's right. Let's talk about core values. I think that that's it. So we can use that 
to you know you illustrate can always our, use it mm -hmm. it always somehow bolsters what you're doing you I, I agree I, I agree with that and honestly I had a kind of a sim similar thing I was probably even more scattered than you I mean I started off as a painter and, and you're an incredible painter I'm an okay painter I just you know like I, I like it I would get into the zone it, it answered all of those necessary parts that you know people try to look for and when they're doing something creative I mm -hmm. definitely would get into the zone and get into it mm -hmm. and be able to do that for hours but I always had this nagging feeling and again this is probably all ego and stupidity but I was like yeah it's okay but it's nothing you know special and even though like I had art shows I mean I've shown my art you know in LA New York and London and I mean which people would be like oh that sounds amazing it, it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't fulfilling it wasn't, this it, ultimate right? isn't that crazy and i think that's what it is is that i think that's what it is it's definitely you're always trying to you're always trying to get down to this like you said core always. value or this i'm core. trying to distill exactly yes. i'm trying to distill so then after you know this art career that i was like this is not working out for me i was also on you know in parallel i was writing all the time mm -hmm. and you know i really loved writing and i really you know i enjoyed the process then and i was teaching while i was doing this and i was thinking to myself you know i think i can do better than all of the publishers out there mm -hmm. and all of the editors out there i just didn't like the way the system was mm -hmm. and instead of saying oh let me like you know transform the system i just said you know fuck this it's not for me so I kind of backed away. I mean, I wrote several novels. Again, like here I am doing like projects. In project, multiple project. languages. Didn't you yeah, write yeah, in I did. English I did. and French? I did. And again, here I am like, oh, well, whatever. Because again, there was something like missing. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I'm the biggest loser ever at this point. Because I just kept doing these projects, getting to a certain level of success. And I was also working for a magazine at the time. This is the war and of art. It is, is the war of art. It so is. It's the like war I was is my own, against yourself. I was my own worst yeah. enemy. I yeah. was. And, you know, my husband, who is generally reasonably, you know, kind of supportive, but he's not a creative. And he's like, you need to choose one thing. And I was like, I cannot. I cannot How can choose. You choose it, one it thing? pained me. Like it made me sad. Mm -hmm. The idea of choosing one thing. And so then, you know, I was still teaching, still working for magazines, still writing, still painting, doing interior design. And I'm like, I'm a crazy person because each and everything is taken mm -hmm. away from what I want to do. And I literally was so frazzled. This is so crazy. This is very NorCal. I went <laughs> to an energy healer. Oh, I love it. You never told me about the I energy did. healer. I did. It was <gasps> crazy. Oh, we might have to have that energy I, healer And on she's the amazing. Show. I would love to have her on the show. Um, I'm not going to put her name up here because I don't have permission yet. But she's an amazing woman. She has clients from California to India to England. Ooh. She's all over the place. She's a celebrity. Um energy healer person. So what did she say? It was incredible. Well, first of all, she had me crying within three seconds, which, which was I've never insane. seen her cry. No, that's not, that's not me. Literally, she kind of got to the, to the block and the block was all about guilt of like, why am I doing these superficial things when there are so many more horrible things in the world? And it was such a weird oh, thing. She had me bawling. It was she, weird. Oh, it wow. was it was really weird and I couldn't stop. But anyway, I eventually and then she's like, "So, let's discuss what it is that you want to do." And I was telling her about my writing and my art and she's like, "No, you want to do more." And I was like, well, "I don't know." She's like, my "No." Will get mad. Yeah, she's like, "No, you're you're <laughs> going to do more. You need to do more. You're going to make this bigger. Bigger, bigger." And I and I got really scared. And I was like, "I don't know. I don't know." And do you know that probably 3 months after that, I, all of a sudden, the idea came, you know how you were talking mm -hmm. about David Lee Roth, who had all this reading and all this stuff, the idea came Well, that's what worked. happens. It, it becomes, just, it's like, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're building this, I mean, when, yeah. when you think about a pregnancy, you yes. know, like all the cells, you know, the blastocyst, One by, and then exactly. it turns and then into this, the baby pops out, and, and like, then you're just like, what happened? happened? Yeah. Oh, I was just eating yeah. sandwiches for exactly. nine months. Exactly. And then it's, it's like, true. bam. And that's what happened, bam, it jumped out, and yeah. I finally found that thing that kind of, even though it's like, yeah, I'm not doing any painting, but I'm doing some graphic design. I'm building this company to help creatives get forward and create their, you know, tell their, their stories yes. and everything else. And all of a sudden I'm so passionate and I can work on it hours a day and not feel not feel like scattered. Anything. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's a wonderful So that's thing. where we want to get. That's exactly. That's so what we want to remind awesome you. We are that we brought yeah. 
<laughs> no, but that's what we want to remind you is that you you will get there. It exactly. is a work in progress. It is. And, 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 you know, there are, so we've all known people who were incredibly focused from a young age and we look at them and they do that one thing and they do it so well. And I see people, my own peers, who started in a creative thing or a professional thing or an artistic but thing. But don't you think other things suffer when that's that That's what happens? I think, yeah. They're, they're super, yeah. So, the focus becomes so narrow. That's, that's what I would like to think so that I can feel better about how long it took me to get here. But yeah, no, I agree. I, I see them like so professionally successful, but maybe, yeah, maybe their their personal life isn't so fabulous, you know, as, as I've... She does have a wonderful life. She does. No, but, but maybe, you know, maybe they're not dreaming about anything bigger or maybe they don't have, you know, or maybe they feel played out. Maybe they're just like, maybe, oh, they do. maybe they're hitting a wall. Like I'm yeah. so sick. Yeah. Like, damn it. This is working. Making yeah. pillowcases. For exactly. Whatever. Well, yeah. Like this is working. So I don't want to throw it away, but you know, I feel stifled. And so we're lucky because we had things not work for a very long time. <laughs> And uh, we're going to call that a good thing. So that's, yeah, yeah so that's what we're saying. We about are fruit ripening on the vine. We are just ripe, 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 ripe fruit. fruit. <laughs> so that's what we're saying is that like you can be passionate about different things. And in fact, you know, so we, we have a, strongly encourage it. Absolutely. It's like, essential. It gives that depth. But here's that important thing. We talked about the core mm -hmm. and, you know, your core value has to be so clear within yourself mm -hmm. and it has to be evident in the message that you're putting out there so you know our message is you know kind of enabling people to be creative and productive and everything we do mm -hmm. you know you're you're more about expressing people's creativity and kind of showing it and i'm about trying to foster it and that comes together mm -hmm. in this show but we have you know each of the projects that we do at this point and also even your day job is part of that vision that you're trying to raise your daughter to be a creative and responsible person, be able mm -hmm. to do all the things that she wants to do. It's frustrating sometimes in terms of you know taking time away from it, but it goes towards your core. Well, yeah, life. I mean, I work two jobs so I can pay the ballet tuition. Exactly, because and that's the because main it's thing. very important yes. to my core values. Exactly, that exactly. I I think we need to do a whole podcast, a whole show on core values. But yes, but it <laughs> it, it speaks to my core values mm -hmm. of. I want to raise a child that has exposure and access to Completely. the arts. Completely. And that yeah. was something that I didn't grow up with. I grew up in cornfields in Ohio. Right. But and, you, but and you, I craved, you know, it you craved, I craved it. it. Yes. And so I was, you know, even though it's very expensive to live here and it's, mm -hmm. it's and I'm working two jobs, mm -hmm. I feel like it's worth it to me mm -hmm. because my daughter has access to the things that I didn't have access to. Completely. So we're going to give you a few little exercises that you guys can use. Um, and then after we've done this boring part of like what to do, we're going to talk a little bit more about David Lee Roth and like mm, what he did. Cause we think pod crush. my pod crush is such a good <laughs> example of this, but, um, let's go through the few things that you can do. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by all of the creative and other things that you're doing, write down all of those things that you either love to do or have to do. Mm -hmm and see if there are any of them that you know for sure, like like I knew with my painting, that are really just a hobby, like just a hobby. Mm -hmm. And they can take such a huge backseat. I mean, as long as you get to them once in a while. Well, they're always there. It's like they say about riding a bike. You mm -hmm. know, whenever I want to do pastels, yeah, they're there. I do it. And, you know, and I'll put a frame on that shit and put it on the wall. It, exactly. And, and yeah, care. no, exactly. And also the reality of creative pursuits is it's not like basketball. Like you cannot paint or draw or knit for months at a time. And you're going to come back to it with fresh eyes and more mm -hmm. talent because you've learned how to look. You've learned how to see. You've learned how to, you know, translate things. And you and have I think to have desire. You have to have you desire. You do. You have to want it to do you it. You so want to do it. You can definitely, if you can eliminate something or say, this is definitely a backseat type of thing. So make a list mm -hmm. and, and backseat. Backseat you know, things. You put it on the bus and you put it exactly. in the backseat. Then there are other things like obligations. So, you know, you've got, you know, your job, but are you going to be grocery shopping every day? Hell no. I need to grocery shop. I mean, you need to grocery shop occasionally, but you can easily say, I'm not going to grocery shop every day. I'm going to try to consolidate or get delivery, you know, things like that. So that like Instacart. I, hate... I mean, that's what somebody told me today. Seriously, she was like, yes. what is your problem? Yes. Why are you using that? We live Absolute. in modern times. This exactly. is not the dark ages. <laughs> it, well, it's so true. We have so many things. We talked about technology before. There's so, There's many, so things many things you can do to, to help save... facilitate exactly. your time saving. And, and to help you. And it's not just the time, but it's the focus. 
You know, yes. it's like stop taking focus away from the things that, you know, you're passionate about and that you could be putting into building something really amazing. And one of the things that Stephen Pressfield says mm -hmm. in The War of Art is... I, I was just going to bring he, it up. I'm he, so glad uh, you yeah, No, but he, he says, he doesn't, you know, he goes in and he writes for four hours and mm -hmm. he sets up everything and yeah. he does it and he writes. And when he walks away from it, he doesn't say, oh, I wonder if I wrote anything good. I wonder yeah. if, you know, his question is, did I write today? Exactly. And so you were talking about questions, so that's another little thing that we have. Instead of asking, you know, what am I doing? Ask, why am I doing? Like, find your yes. why. There was a whole book about it. We're going to put up the name of the author on the Find Your Why uh, yeah. book, which was a little bit controversial because he wrote it for entrepreneurs or business people. Mm -hmm. And so many were like, well, this doesn't tell me how to build a company. Well, if you're still, you know, looking to- Is it Simon? Is Simon? Simon, yes. Oh my yes. gosh, that's the, okay, that, okay. Right. Simon. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, okay, I'm looking, I'm it, doing No, because I just remember, and I saw him, he's so handsome, and I watched his um, oh TED God, talk. You're so, oh, yes, he had a TED talk. I have yes, a TED yes, crush yes, too yes. on him. <gasps> but Simon, he, yeah. Simon Sinek. Yes! yes! I love okay. Simon. Ooh, okay. I just spit everywhere. Ted, Ted Crush. Yeah. <laughs> Ted Crush. Cheers to that. Yeah. Ted Crush. Everybody has a Ted Crush on yes. Simon. So Simon, Simon Sinek. Says. Thank you. Simon says, find your why. Yeah, he does. And, you know? and his TED Talk is incredible. It's, can you break it down? Because like, I'm terrible. I'm like, I, I held to, oh, to the... Oh, you know, I tried, to, <laughs> I tried to talk to you about this the other day. And it was, you know, I mean, he compares two products. Mm-hmm. I think one was an Apple product, one was a product that we've never heard oh, of. Because, you're right. yeah, yeah. Because, they, because they hadn't found their why. Because they hadn't found their why. And the product yes. was, it, it could have even been superior completely, completely. to this yes. Apple product. However, mm -hmm. the way that Apple marketed the product was it was all about their why. It wasn't like, oh, it's got this bell and this yes. whistle and this, that. Yes. And that. Not the characteristics that it, it has, but what it, it does, how it makes what people feel. What it does feel. for you. Yes. And now that is one of the huge secrets because a lot psychologically of, completely but a lot of people who are um, entrepreneurs or just creatives or artists think how am I going to get attention in this world with so many other people creating things mm -hmm. and especially if I came to it on the late side as some of us had not naming names but if you how do you do that and I think you do that by really answering honing in on your why. Why. and well, honing you know, in Victor on that. Frankel yeah. I mean not not to get you know go back to the Holocaust because you know, that's it, a downer. That's it's not no, but it, <laughs> but it's just you know, Victor Frankl says you can endure any how if mm -hmm. you have a why. Oh, I love that, and that's how he survived I the concentration that. camp. I love, and, and he and writes yes. his book about oh, that's that. So the concept is not new. What did he What did he end up doing when he got out? Well, he was a he was a psychologist, oh, okay. and he was an Austrian yeah. Jew, and uh -huh. his you know he. His You've whole been very Germanic today with young his, his whole I know what's going, what's on? going on. Like channeling yeah. this shit. I don't know. <laughs> no, but he he survived a concentration camp. His whole family perished, but his his whole what's the book called? I mean, I I can't even believe I'm drawing a blank on this. We'll put it up there. <laughs> um, but his this man's search for meaning. I love it. That's we beautiful. can say man and woman search for meaning. Yes, <laughs> the modern I, day version. But yeah, he says you can you can endure. You know, of course, he was trying to survive. Well, yeah, he was trying. But you can like, endure any how if right. you have a why. I love that. So think about that and feel a little bit guilty if you're sitting there like whining about Crying not knowing about. how you're going to get your oil <laughs> painting done and your crochet at the same time. Because this guy was surviving a concentration <laughs> camp and still came out yeah. and did something so amazing. You, so that, you can do it that's too. That's the perspective part yeah. of the podcast uh, yeah. where you're just like. A little perspective yeah, for you perspective. Yes. You know, you're not dealing with trying to survive here. No. Maybe so, you are. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And maybe. we want to hear from you in the yeah, comments. We'll, we'll interview like that, you and those we'll... hotline numbers yes. on the bottom. <laughs> We're <laughs> such bad joking. people. We're bad. <laughs> We're bad, bad, bad. People. So that's your homework, you guys. Do your little list of mm. the, or a big list. We're not judging the size of your list of the <laughs> things that you love, the things that you like to do, the creative and the obligations. And then see what you can cross out or kind of put a little back arrow to so that you can just kind of put them in their place and start to realize that if you're core, and then also extra credit for those of you who are like goody goody, you teacher's know, teacher's pet, teacher's kind of pet. nonsense. Yes, yes, teacher's pet gets a bottle of wine. Um, we will if you can put your core value that you have discovered down in the comments. Um, we will reward the best one. We will review them. We, we will, will reward we'll re the best one. We will indeed. So we'll feature you. We will. Exactly. And and send a bottle of wine. We okay, can we talk about my pod crush? Hell yeah, we're talking about your pod crush. Okay, guys, it's time for pod crush. We're going to talk about the 
um, example. The, okay, the, so he is a quintessential is, example. Yes, in David my Lee Roth. David Lee Roth. Mm -hmm. He is from. He was the front man of Van Halen mm -hmm. before before Sammy Hagar. Sam, Sammy Hagar. Yes, and. Where Are we going to the notes? Well, oh I'm going God, to the notes serious. just because I want to know. You want to so, get it right. She, you know, no. pod, pod, pod crushes. So, yeah, I just don't, I don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, I don't mm -hmm. want to offend anyone. No. Um, we do it all the time, but not today. Not, 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 not with him. Not DLR. Today, yes, not yeah. DLR. Yes. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's embarrassed now. Blushing. She's, she's blushing. Blush. He's not even here. I haven't had a crush in so many years. <laughs> Thanks to Joe Rogan. I was oh, like, there really? You go. Thank you, Joe Rogan. Thank you. So, tell us about David Lee Roth. Okay, so David Lee Roth, mm -hmm. is, he is the, the quintessential entrepreneur of multi-passionate, which, which, which I, I don't had, even think about. I didn't know. Like, I, I thought of music. I thought after, you know, all of that, I just, I hadn't heard I about him at he all. just so. went off into the ether. Yeah, I thought I he mean, kind of was like in, you know. Faded with like he's not even gel, in combo. Where is jelly he? shoes or whatever yeah. those things are. Something. So, um, okay. So, what's he been up to? So, he now has a company called Laugh to Win. That's what we do. All That's time. what we Every do. Day. We're constantly laughing. I mean, <laughs> we're going to edit out a lot of the laughing. Hopefully. Yeah. But maybe not. Unless it's mixed together with like intelligence stuff or something. Yeah, it might. Can't you know. really afford to lose that. <laughs> One little kernel. Yes. Uh, but so he develops products such as, well, he's kind of the front man for this company called Inc. The Original. So he's very, okay. very into... Oh, wait, tattoos? Tattoos. Ooh, tattoos, And okay. he developed sunscreens that are, you know, organic. Wow. They are, you know, fragrance-free. For on top of the tattoos. So to protect the tattoo and the color. For tattoos. The, I love it. Yes, so he has. Protect your investment. He became, he was, you know, he had one little tattoo mm -hmm. years ago, but then he waited 60 years and he finally got the Japanese tuxedo. Oh, And so it's like wow. having, it's like having a, a wood print or a woodblock oh, print incredible. on his body oh well i do and, have, oh I, I, I know we might want to find an image of it but if we can there's gonna be a picture right here between us and, and I i'm gonna go even, like this yeah and, I and, have, Micah's and, gonna be. and i'm not even into tattoos but the, no, but but the passion him, behind if this if it's dlr yeah if it's dlr yeah, i might got, i might mm -hmm. actually be into tattoos all of a sudden mm -hmm. and this is a new okay. development so okay. you know you live and you learn and so he's developing these products that's amazing and um you know, it's for, it, so he develops all these other products as well for. And does it have a philanthropical kind of angle or philanthropical? Is that even philanthropic? Well, he, he develops a angle. lot of products. You know, basically he said he built this company on singing and dancing. So, wow. you know, everything. Well, very that, true. I mean, yeah, so yeah. everything he did, you know, he. Core value. Core value. Uh -huh. he was, so he's building, and it's for. It's for basically traveler. He said people that live out of buses and vans, which he certainly has. He a lot does. Of he goes with. and okay. he rock climbs. He's very into nature. He does oh, wow. a lot of kayaking. Oh, so he he's does continued. A lot of rock climbing. Oh, so now we know what he's doing. Oh, yeah. rock from rock to rock. He rock. I mean, that guy is yes. rock. He rocks and he rocks. Yes. I mean, he. It's just like yeah. That's awesome. It's super hot. Yeah. So you know he's rock climbing with this. You know. Then he, you know, he lived in Japan and he did all wow. this um, Soto Japanese painting and calligraphy and he, That's and, and he talks about, how it, old, do we know how old we, I mean, you probably know, how old was he when he like stopped performing with Van Halen? Well, they were, so it was night, I want to say he wasn't a 1977 chicken. to 1980, I want to say, I mean, it had to be like maybe 10 years that they were. Yeah. Something about like that. About 10 years. Yeah, because I remember, I mean, like in peak Van Halen, uh, pre Sammy Hagar, I know that was 1984 for a fact because mm -hmm. I was such a fan. But um, I think it was 87. It must have the been. Things kind but of he was up. no spring, spring chicken. How old is he now? Do we know? Oh, gosh. I don't know. But I mean, if you look at images of his clothing, his suits, mm -hmm. they're these like beautiful wool, you know, wow. design. I mean, it's I like he never too his... late, basically, oh, is what it is. I'm like, just like, yeah. He's got short hair. Oh, he my drinks God, no. like designer whiskey. I mean, he's like, hey, we should have him on the show. I feel like he needs to come on our show. <laughs> I mean, you, you'd, you'd have to like be able to speak oh, and keep your, your. I would have to be like, <laughs> I'd get one of those little Japanese fans. Yeah. <laughs> lose a couple of pounds you know you don't know that you don't Ooh. know that that's the thing to do yeah <laughs> so anyway he you know he's he's built this company wow. he's he's really you know 
he's are multi-passionate his, about I mean, all it's kinds amazing of everything things. he's gotten done. Like, so he had that initial success that then let him, like, he focused to mm-hmm. scatter, I guess. So that's another way of doing it, right? Yeah. Do you have anything even, to say about well, that? Well, because even Joe was like, oh, so you're doing the, like, 50-hour work, you know, corporate oh. thing. And he was like, no, not really. You know, he, oh. he, 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 said, teams he said, I hire a team of, you know, wow. he he's, calls them artisanal team members and we they need artisanal and team they members. travel <laughs> and they you know they they select the ingredients and the materials and they you know they work together and they it. do this creative that's so cool that's yeah, like the so, fantasy of the creative thing where you can just do the kind of fun creative stuff but you need to be somewhere before you can get there you yeah. know so and it's so hard. yeah so you know he's bringing all of his passions together and love it. i'm sure love that it. there's yeah there's you know, i mean that's a great message on how to live that multi passionate creative life Thank you for that. Yeah. Even well, though it's selfish because of your Ross. I know. Even though it's selfish because of your crush. But well, cheers hey. to that. Thank Anybody you. Anybody want to jump? I know. Jump, jump right in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us for the thinking part of our creative happy hour. Mm-hmm. And we will see you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>